In this clip, we'll be integrating our green screen footage into our shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a merge node. Just hitting the tab key and typing in merge. And again, our B pipe is going to hook up to our main source right here. And then our A pipe will hook into our key light. And let's go ahead and view this merge now. Awesome, looks like we're done. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> we're gonna need to do a lot of work to get him in here correctly. So one of the first things I need to do is add a transform node. So I'll hit the tab key and type in transform. And we'll just place that between the key light and our merge. And basically to flip him, you're just gonna scale him the other way. And you can see that I just got really lucky and put that right at negative one. But if you were at like negative 0.5 or something like that, you just wanna come over here and put a negative one in the width and that's gonna flip him around. So that's a nice little trick to have. Then we'll also just come over here on the edge and kind of start to scale him down. Let's see where he, you know, he's about that size in comparison to the human. Her legs are probably about that long, so this would make him be sitting on the ground. And that's a pretty good spot for him. Now, right now, he's obviously not going to look, you know, very well integrated because neither does the robot. We don't really have any kind of tracking data in here. But we can still, you know, kind of eyeball and get the colors to match a little bit better because right now he's way brighter than everybody else. And he also doesn't have this really harsh uh, backlighting that the robot has and then front lighting that the girl has. So he would have the front lighting, obviously, since he's looking this way. So let's go ahead and clear our property spin. And I'm gonna add a color correct first to get him a little bit darker. So we'll just drop that in between the transform and the merge. And I'm just gonna take the gain down a little bit so he's not quite so bright. And if you wanted to, you could gamma, but I feel like when you start to play around with the gamma too much, um, it's going to kind of harm the integrity of the actual footage. You can see where the dark areas are getting much, much darker. So I prefer to just use the gain only. So it's okay that he looks like this right now. I know he doesn't look very well integrated, but I've got a trick up my sleeve for how we're really going to start to get this to look amazing. Now, I also want him to look a little bit more yellow because you can see how everything kind of has this golden hue to it. So I can come in here and just barely kind of push down into that yellow color. And then also maybe even a little tiny bit more green. I mean, just a hair, just because the, you know, it's kind of casting this greenish hue on everything here. So even that honestly might be a little bit more than, than we really wanted. And then let's jump back out here to where we're looking at the actual gain and kind of everything could go back this way a bit. This is one thing that's hard about, you know, trying to control the overall um, dark and lightness of it through gain and then also the color. So it's easy to just add another color correct and come over here and then say for this one, we can, you know, make him a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, whichever. I think just a little bit darker might be better. Okay, so now his color is starting to look better in the shot, but he still doesn't have the right lighting. So here's where that color correct and the mask input is really going to come in handy. So I'll add another color correct, and we'll just drop it there. And this one, I want to gain up a lot, so he's much brighter, where the brightness is matching kind of what the girl has here on her arm. And then we'll add a roto node. And I'm going to put the mask input of the color correct over here to the roto. And then we'll just draw a little roto along maybe the front of his ear, the top of his little face. And we can kind of come back out here and then come along the front of the dog like this. Maybe just a little bit more kind of taper it off down here. Perfect. So you can see how now he kind of has this little, this little white part on his front. Maybe bring it in just a bit. 
And we can do a little bit of a feather with that. But if you feel like the feather's just not really happening as gradually as you want, because I feel like I can still kind of see a line there. What I like to do is just feather it a bit and then add a blur node. So just type in blur. And we'll drop that between the roto and the color correct. And I want to pull this up a bit and just add a dot node. So I held control to add that dot node there. And then with our blur, we'll just increase that. So you can see that it doesn't get over here where we're not wanting it to happen. And then if you still need more on your gain, you can come in and just crank that up. Maybe do like a five even. So now he's getting some really bright areas. Then we can clear our properties bin and let's zoom out a bit. And you can see how now we've got this kind of instant, really pretty bright light on the front of the dog the same way that the girl has. Now you may come in and decide, okay, I don't want quite that much. And you can kind of play around with this. Now it's also gonna be a bit of a challenge to key this to match the dog's movements because we know that over time the dog kind of barks and moves around a little bit. So, you know, you may need to look at this and say, okay, well here he's barking, so I need to grab all these. You can also rotate with these types of rotoscopes, which I think is amazing. I love that they have that functionality just built right in. So you can really have the most control over those. And then when he puts his head kind of back down we don't want that to take quite so long. So maybe right here. Now also, you know, let's say I wanna move this key right here over here. You would go into the dope sheet to do that. So this is where you can kind of get into some animation stuff. But all I need to do is just grab those keys just by drawing that box around them and left clicking and dragging them over to my uh, current time indicator. So there's that. And you can see now how that's going to move with him a little bit better. And then we just go back to kind of where he was here and add a few more keys. Kind of rotate this back around there. And here. And because this is so soft, it really makes it nice and easy to kind of get away with not having it be in the same place every time. It's not quite the same as a typical rotoscope like what we had around the leaves. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. It's going to need some more keys, obviously, further down, especially when he lies down and everything, because that looks crazy. But I've got the first few here started. And, you know, that's just going to take a little bit more time to, to go the rest of the way through. So I would encourage you to key your rotoscope to kind of follow along with him along the top of his head and the front of his chest um, through throughout the rest of the shot. Now, now that we have him pretty well integrated into the shot as far as um, the colors and ever in the size and everything go, I want to start actually getting these uh, two figures to match um, the camera tracking because they're just kind of still here and they're they're not actually being very well integrated into the shot. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our next module where we'll begin understanding the 3D space and everything that goes along with that in terms of cameras. So stick around for the next module.